Hello everyone and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Tuesday, May 23rd, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. Please remember everyone that you can help support our show by going to patreon.com slash daily internet. That's how you can help support us financially to help the show grow and in addition to gaining yourself more episodes a week of this show. Nathan, how are you doing today? Dude, I'm so dead tired. Do you ever sleep? Uh, normally during my lunch break. Uh, what about at home, at night? Define night uh, different than morning. After 10 p.m., before 6 a.m. Yeah. When? Like, 1 to 6, generally. Alright. How's that, how's that doing for you? Um, well, I didn't quite make it to bed at 1 last night, so, I mean, there's that. Um... And then I didn't sleep during my lunch break, and I only had one energy drink today, as opposed to, you know, like, four that I did yesterday. <clears throat> so, Nathan. What? What time did you make it to bed? I don't want to talk about that. What time was it? I don't want to talk about that. Nathan. I'm not going to tell you. Was it, was, was it before three? Yeah. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> oh, you sad individual. Uh, I mean, you know. How are you walking? I This has been my form for the last, like, year and a half. That sounds painful. It... Yeah, kind of is. Yeah, kind of is. Yeah. I mean, you get used to pain after a while. So... There is somebody that I don't actually know this person. Uh, I somewhat recognize them, but have no idea who they're who they are. That because my Facebook profile is public, right? And mm -hmm. so friends of friends and stuff like that can see my posts and all that jazz. Uh, I don't know who Marilyn Leach is. Yeah, neither do I. But they, they they like a lot of my posts, which is fine. I have no problem with that. However, there is. A, it, it, I don't, I can't remember it, it, in Anchorage. I can't remember if it's a damn company or like a lawyer, but their name is Merrill Lynch. Huh. And this person's name is Marilyn Leach. It messes with my brain every time. Sure. Random side stuff. Completely unimportant in all ways, but whatever. Anyway. Ten. Education Secretary DeVos to give all student loan accounts to one company. This was submitted by D0397 to our politics. So they've already she's already been rolling back some of the previously instituted things through the Department of Education, specifically targeting student loans. These these have been targeting sorry, forgive me on that one. They've targeting the protections that you have on student loans. If you are unable to pay them back, which I mean, a lot of people end up not being able to pay them back. This is specifically looking at federally funded student loans. Now, what they are looking to do moving forward is to take all of the current student loans that are under the federal government, as well as any future ones, and put them through one company instead of several as a way to centralize and better serve the borrowers. To socialize. Uh... The, the thing is, is that it, it will reduce the amount of confusion and the number of people's hands in the pot, but it turns it into one hand, and that means that that hand can do a lot that they wouldn't have to worry about, uh, that we wouldn't have had to worry about otherwise if there's more than one option, because only having one option is always bad, even if that option is from the federal government. Right. You always want to have at least two or three, you know? Mm-hmm. And in addition to that... Eh, like no, it, no monopolies here, boss. The federal funding, federal funded student loans still loans still go through corporations, and if you have all of the federal student loans through one corporation, then you get into one of those too big to fail scenarios because they are the only ones that monitor and run that. I mean, who bails them out if they if they can't run it? Federal government, like we did with the banks. That's fair. I, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I don't know how I feel about this issue. Well, it, I don't. I don't know enough about it. Well, and it doesn't affect you or me much because we don't have student loans. 
but there is lots of people that have them. And the other thing is it also depends on how and where you got your student loan. Because this is specifically going to be affecting those that are received through federal funding. Right. So if you got your student loan through a non-federal source, then you're still going to owe, owe the, that. Area. Well, and this won't change it if you even did get it through a federal source. It's just going to change who it goes through, essentially. Now, oh, okay. what it, what, on the surface, this doesn't really change anything for those of you that are borrowing or have borrowed. It does mean, though, that it is a centralized power that now has control over all federal student loans, which is anti-consumerism. Yeah, isn't that the opposite of of what america is based off of basically yeah but i mean it's i guess it's supposed to be considered a different market or something because it's not it, it, i don't know education so, in america is weird is this a good thing or a bad thing um over, overall it is a negative thing but not nearly as negative as most of the other things that are happening around sure like it would be better if this didn't happen, but at the moment, it is not horribly detrimental if it does. Right. I mean, it's just annoying. Right. So, we'll see. I mean, I don't currently ever intend to have student loans, so for me, awesome, but I don't know what it means for the people who do. I don't plan on being a student, but, I mean, you know, you never know if things change. I just feel like there's other lucrative ways to become, you know more wealthy without having to put yourself through years of study and debt well and the education system is imbalanced anyway mm -hmm. like it's gotten exponentially more expensive compared to the rate of income yeah definitely nine philippine soldiers battle isis link gunmen in marawi city streets this was submitted by oh uh Six Cyrus to our world news. Sure. Six Iris. Vi I think it's, it's virus, but... Spelled weird. Yeah. So anyway, this actually first broke from people sharing things on social media because there was a bunch of trucks that had driven up and started raising ISIS flags around the city. And then fighting started to break out in the city streets of Marawi. And the it, the situation has been contained. The National Guard in the Philippines responded. And the... 15 at least 15 gunmen have since been taken down and the entire assault has been completely negated um they were however able to take over a hospital and raise the flag on top of the hospital um and then on top of that they did it while duterte wasn't there but duterte still put it under martial law yep so but for them martial law is only 60 days right well, and the other thing here is they are th – this This is a branch of ISIS is another thing to note is it isn't the main ISIS group. It is a – like a subdivision essentially. Yeah, why, why, would they be in, why would they be in the Philippines? Um, because extremism. Uh, that – okay. So we'll see what happens. I mean, Duterte did say last year that he would help break up ISIS if Islam Islamist insurgency increased in his country. This kind of adds to that. Yeah, you don't you don't say. Yeah. Uh, I, it's it's kind of weird, but at the same time, I guess it could happen literally anywhere. So. Yeah. It could. Could happen here. Might have already. Yeah. Interesting, though. I'm glad... It, it says that they attacked, like, a hospital and stuff like that. And I, I understand I, it's probably because of the Philippines that we don't have information. It doesn't say any level of what damage the attack caused. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Because, hmm. cause, like, that's a concern. Is like, you know, what... What is the the are, how many how many people are dead? Like what happened? Yeah, it doesn't yeah. say. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Well, and maybe it's just too early to know, and maybe the Philippines won't release those numbers. I don't know. I I would hope so, but I mean, who knows? I I I think Not they us. would be. Uh, <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, I, definitely not us. But I would, I would hope that they would at least mention something about it. We'll see if anything else comes up. Eight. Justice Department ethics experts clear Mueller to lead Russia probe. This was submitted by Subsonic87 to our politics. This is going to be a quick follow-up story for us. We previously talked about how the Justice Department did want to um, institute a new council, essentially, to be the head for the FBI, it, with specifically for the Russia investigation. Their choice was former FBI Director Robert Mueller, and he has now been approved, so he will go on to lead the Russian probe. Oh, okay. So that's good. Yeah, because before, right? the, yeah, yeah. Before they just presented him as an option, he wasn't confirmed, and now they've checked into it, investigated it, and they there is no conflict of interest with him conducting the investigation. Um. So apparently, Trump has appointed his lawyer for the the Russian probe. According to BBC.com. Really? Yes. Uh, he has appointed lawyer Mark Kasowitz to represent him. Oh, to represent Trump, not to... Yes, Not yes. to conduct the investigation. Correct. You know, I understand that... How, how do you... It, it, it's one of those, like, cliches of like, movies and stuff that normally if someone lawyers up it means that they are guilty. Right. That doesn't necessarily mean that. I know, but it just, it, it, my shirt is doing weird things on the stream. Is it? Yeah. Because, I, I mean, yeah, it's kind it, of, it's really, thing. really fine black and white stripes. So it's, it's doing weird. Don't be things. so full of yourself. What? You said it's really, really fine. Oh, n no. Fine. Like thin, not fine. I, like looks I, good. No. What's wrong with you? Because I was making a joke. It was a bad joke. You're a bad joke. It, I, you're, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I got, I got nothing to say back to that, so I'm just, <laughs> I'm just gonna, instead, I'm just gonna go on to the next topic now. Alright, I win. Seven. Beautiful scientist not taken as seriously as less attractive colleagues. This is submitted by Billy Jacko to R Not The Onion. They literally did a study. To see how seriously people took scientists. Didn't wasn't there something that we reported on recently saying that intelligence and and attractiveness actually co correlate a bit more than than the other? Yes. They did a study and found out that people, the general populace, believe that if you are a beautiful scientist, that you are working on less important matters. That they like, th but however, people were more interested in what the beautiful people, you know, be beauty is in the eye of the, the beholder, beautiful people, the beautiful but they people. They were curious, they were more interested in what the attractive scientists were doing. However, the forest, they also the didn't believe they were doing as important things. Shit on your knees. Sorry, what was that? God damn it, Nathan. You need to turn me up. If you can't hear me when you're talking, that's a bad thing. It cuts you it cuts you out when I talk. Really? Yeah, I don't know if it's my headphones or what. That's really interesting and strange and odd. Okay. Either way, yeah. So to recap for you real quick, if you're a pretty scientist, the general populace believes you are working on less important things, but they would like to know about it anyway. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I I am not a scientist nor pretty, so I don't think I belong in this study. I don't feel like we should base scientific worth on a person's physical appearance. I completely agree. Because um, I care more about what the science results are. Because mm -hmm. that's what matters. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you ready for a, a feel-good story? Uh, I want to answer Andrew's question here. Uh, it is not technically a faux hawk. Oh, it my is, hair? No. It, it is a faux Pidgeotto. Uh, it, it, the, 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 what, what, what word I'm looking for? The salon term? Whatever. The, the faux Pidgeotto. It, it, it's called an undercut. If you are looking for the, uh, the actual term that is used for it. I should change that name. What, to a faux Pidgeotto? 
Yeah. It, well, we, we, we trimmed the back of it so it doesn't actually... A pidgeyo foe, It doesn't if you actually will. hang down as far, so it's not quite as pidgeotto y A pidgeyo foe, if you will. I can mess it up. And then somewhat fix it. Whatever. I will see it in a second or two. You'll see it in a second or two. I can see it right now. I don't give a shit. You dunk, nerd. Anyway. Oh. Where are we? This. Yeah. Six. Taxi driver who learned to read and write at 53 celebrates with family. Oh, This is submitted by Flat White Lover to our uplifting news. Yep, the guy was in a large class when he was younger and just kind of managed to squeeze his way by. He ended up being diagnosed with a severe case of dyslexia and just dealt with it his entire life and was never able to read or write very well. And uh, then he wanted to take a computer class and realized that he couldn't take the computer class because he couldn't read or, or read the material. So he got a tutor and then went to a specialty school and now he is able to read and he learned to read at 53. Damn. Yeah. That's pretty fucking sick. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Are you... Did you just call him a dog? Yeah, he's my dog. I... I, I don't know if you meant it that way. I didn't. You... You bitch. Did you mean that in a dog way? How dare you? I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean it. I mean, it's not like I was going to actually hit you anyways. My bark is worth, worse than my bite. It's a pun! Five. South Korea fires warning shots at North Korea after an un unidentified object flies over demilitarized zone. Don't take me for Pom uh, Pomeranian. Oh, fuck. I fucked that up. Uh, anyways, this was submitted by Sam Cro uh, Cropper to Our World News. Yep, so an unidentified object, which is now believed to be a very, um, like, essentially a drone of some sort that was launched from North Korea, was flying over the demilitarized zone in which South Korea was just like, fuck it, shoot. Yep. Pew, pew, pew! They were just warning shots, though. They didn't... You know, mean to actually hit anything. Well, here's the thing is, it doesn't say what the morning shots, like, was it with, like, um, like you know, an assault rifle? Was it a, a, a missile? They're warning shots. It's probably a large machine gun. Okay. At the drone? Yeah. You don't know, it could have been something aside from a drone. Maybe. You don't know if they have drone technology over there. Well, I mean, it was back in, like, what, 2010, 2000, no, 2014, um, that North Korea did show that they had very rudimentary and crude and, like, behind-the-times drone technology. What if it wasn't North Korea and it was just aliens? Maybe. It was an unidentified flying object. That's spooky. Ooh... Now, one thing that I will point out, though, is that the this is not the first time that this has happened. Um, I mean, South Korean officials discovered that North Korea had been trying to fly drones across the border back in 2014. Um, there was also back in, uh, also in 2014, there was a trade of machine gun fire and rifle fire after South Korean activists released anti-North Korean propaganda balloons that would cross the demilitarized zone. And Not the ones with the interview in it? Uh, I don't. I don't actually know. Oh man, the interview was great. That was a great movie. Um, there was also attacks that were blamed on North Korea back in 2010 that led to the death of 50 South Koreans. So I mean, th this is an eternal struggle that's going on there. Yeah, this is worse than Israel and Palestine. I mean, it. it... Well, okay, maybe not. But I feel like Israel and Palestine hate each other. Well, and also, when, when there are pictures constantly. of the South Korean guards that are holding their arms linked together as they go to open the border door so that North Korean guards can't pull them into the country, they literally arm chain each other so that they can't be kidnapped by the other country. That's, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. And kind of sad. You need a border wall. They have one, a big it, one. A bigger border wall. Um, one that rivals China. But 
So here's the and thing. Then kick out all the Mexicans. Have you ever looked at the Great Wall of China's path that it covers? No. The Great Wall of China, it is of no surprise that it didn't keep the Mongols out. Because people, when you see the Great Wall of China, they always show you that same strip, right? That big, right. beautiful strip. That's the only strip that looks that way. Because when they wanted to build the Great Wall of China, they forced the lords of those local areas to build the wall. So... None of the uh, most of the Great Wall of China is not connected, and it's in different places and parts. Well, it may not have kept the Mongols out, but you know who it did keep out? Who? The Mexicans. No, no. Hashtag build the wall. No, no, it didn't. Yeah. Yeah, there's probably no Mexicans in China. You know what? I bet there are actually some. Probably like one or two. Because. I'm, I'm just betting that there's at least some. I mean, probably, but, like, China's a big country. If I can find a bloody map of it. Oh, well. I'm over it. Moving on. Don't even care anymore. But, yeah, it doesn't stretch. But they have much less Mexicans than we do. That's true. Hashtag build the wall. Mexicans are also a lot farther away from China. Nonsense. They're about the same distance. They can walk there, right? Yeah. They can climb there. N no, no. They gotta swim across the Gulf. Oh. It's the same distance as swimming across the Pacific. No, no. Four. Yeah. Manchester Arena attack. Islamic State claims it carried out bombing that killed 22 at Ariana Grande concert. This is submitted by Redivert to our news. So we you didn't hear we us talk claim. about it yesterday. There was a bombing that happened, a suicide bombing at the Manchester Arena after an Ariana Grande concert had concluded. There is now 22 killed and over 59 that are injured. 14 of those are critically injured and had to be rushed to the hospital. A very large number of those are children. So there's that. Well, I mean, it's understandable. And... There is also now, um, the Islamic State has come out to claim the attack. Of course they would. Whether or not it was them, I, I'm, not, I'm actually unsure, but I, I know something of this caliber. They would definitely say that it was totally them. Um, the suicide bomber has been named. They, ha they know who it was and who it is. Um, I'm not going to say his name because I do not believe that we need to in any way immortalize them for what they have done, whether it's any positive or negative or any way fashion whatsoever. Their actions are completely abhorrent and terrible, and I don't want to uh, spread th their name because that's not okay. I have learned his name. I've, I haven't seen a picture of him. So I I'm not. glad that I'm glad that the news uh, areas that I have gone to have not posted pictures. Yep, I have not seen a picture of him either. Did you did you hear about the friggin' uh, journalist that is basically just losing his life over this? No. So, and I I have seen this guy all over Twitter. His name is David Leavitt. Okay. And mere within within like thirty minutes of this hitting the 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 news desks, right? He sends out a tweet that says multiple confirmed killings. Um, what was his exact tweet? It was something along the lines of multiple confirmed multiple confirmed fatalities. I'm I'm not that surprised because I barely survived the last Ariana Grande concert I attended. Oh my god. And while I understand the humor that he was trying to get at, that is not a joke that you need to make, sir. Not for another, like, month, year and a half. At least? Yeah. At, at least a month. Wow. Yeah, so the, the internet has proceeded to light him on fire. And he was like, guys, that's what I do. I take important news and I make bad jokes out of it. They're like, yeah, but... It's one thing if you make a joke about Donald Trump's tiny hands. It's another thing when you make a joke when children died. Yeah. I, uh, I've already seen memes for it. I saw memes before I learned that it happened. Well, that's pretty normal. Like, let's be honest. Actually, not, not really. I usually tend to look at the news first thing in the morning. That's fair. I turn tend to look at the news when I build the show notes. <laughs> Goddamn it, Michael.
Tampa. What? No, it's true. Three. Trump budget based on a true two trillion dollar math error. This was submitted by. Now, what happened was to our politics. So, the Trump budget is based on the idea that over the next 10, 10 years, it will completely balance out the entire budget to the point that we won't have a debt anymore. This is based on the fact if t Trump's tax reform goes through. Trump's tax reform wants to drastically cut taxes across the entire board. And the thing is, is like, how do you expect to pay off money when we already don't make enough money to pay off what we owe on the baseline if you are going to receive less money from taxes? The idea that he had put forth is that if people have more money, it will stimulate more growth because they'll spend more money. Which Solid logic. Is, is actually very legitimate business logic. It's one of the reasons that like the businesses and everything up here loves the PFD because the PFD stimulates growth for Alaskan uh, it is the worst time to be in retail. Yeah, but it, it, it is also good if you are wanting to, like, build retail because, I mean, that, that helps it grow. Every October, you know that everyone is going to get one to $2,000 and go, Katunk, I want to buy stuff. And yeah. so if people get have more money because they're paying less taxes, the idea is they will do the same thing. However, his tax reform plan is laid out in such a way that... There will be no loss in revenue. Uh, I don't know another word to describe it based on you know taxable income for the federal government because it will have it will it will it will be recovered in that additional growth and spending that the country will do. But it the budget is based on that being extra income compared to the money we have right now. So the way it is is that he has it lined out of we will make less money, but we'll make it up by people having more money, so much so that we will make even more than what we make now, and it'll balance out over 10 years. No. No. So he's trying to double, say, double dip from the same revenue source. By no. claiming that the $2 trillion that change in the tax system will be made up by growth to the point that it will generate an additional $2 trillion, but claiming those is the same thing? I... Ugh. Ugh. This is worse than... This is worse than Alaska state budget. Yeah. It, and our budget's atrocious. It's like... It's like your employer saying, okay... If someone, if if you give someone money and they only spend money at your store, and you norm and you normally get a hundred and they get two hundred dollars and you normally get a hundred and fifty of that, and then they spend fifty there, you're like, okay, if I only take a hundred of it, will you spend all hundred here? And they go, yeah, sure, of course I will. And you're like, cool, this still works out for me and it makes them happy, so we'll do that. And then you go. Wait, that means that I'm getting two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, there's not uh, actually any extra money being made. It's all the same amount of money. Just it's, you're just shuffling it around. Yeah, it's a shell game. You're just moving it from one spot to the other, and the numbers change, but the actual ratios don't. Maybe this has been the, the reason why Trump has been semi-rich or not semi-fairly rich for the, his entire life. He just keeps moving money around. Yeah. He doesn't actually spend it. Maybe. I don't... He, he, I mean... He, well, see, he spends other people's money. Exactly. Two. Sir Roger Moore dead. Legendary James Bond actor dies at age 89. This was submitted by Braxy to our news. Um, so, yeah. Sir Roger Moore, he did contract cancer very recently and quickly lost that bout with cancer. He has passed away at the age of 89. The single individual who currently holds the most representations in film of Bond. He has starred in seven Bond movies more than any other actor. Um, more than Sean Connery. More than Sean Connery. Sean Connery only did six. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and that's what most actors sign on for is six. Yeah. 
So he, two trilogies. Yep. And so at this point, um, yeah, I, I, you you know, I as tragic as this is, he made it to eighty nine. And as much as I hate the cancer is what took him, he made it to eighty nine. I, it's yeah, I know he lived fairly long it, life. It makes me feel a lot better than the people that were like sixty nine that got taken by cancer. I'm honestly surprised he didn't get cancer sooner. Why? Just normally people can track cancer usually a lot sooner. That's fair. But yeah, so they're. they're, they're <laughs> Andrew in the chat room says, and yet Connery is the only real Bond. I don't know. I really like Pierce Brosnan. I really dislike Daniel Craig. Um, uh, I, there's a, a bit where. Um, oh, um. Daniel Craig was being talked about by Sir Roger Moore, um, how how he viewed uh, Daniel Craig's Bond, and Daniel Craig was or he was like Daniel Craig is so much more gritty as a Bond, and it's it's slightly more realistic as a Bond than say me because like his his Bond was a, a bit more goofy. Sure. Um, he also said that James Bond is probably the worst spy in the world. Yeah, probably. Because he just walks up to a bar and they already know he wants a martini because they already know who he is. <laughs> sure. Um, also, what kind of fucking spy uses their own goddamn name? Well, is, isn't the idea is that it's not actually their name? Like, James Bond is, is like a, a, a surname, a, 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 an alias given to them as part of becoming 007? Right. Like isn't that the idea, and that's why multiple people can all be James Bond because no, it... that's a that's a fan theory. Oh, is it a fan theory? Okay. Yeah, the in rea in the in the books it was the same single sc Scottish gentleman who carried around uh, Walter PPK. That 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 poor individual. Very small gun. If that was all one dude in all of those stories, like one. The world is in crisis more often than the Avengers movies. Yeah. And two, I like you you're how do you not hate life? I saw this uh shower post and it was like uh what if every failed missile launch from North Korea was actually a spy doing his job correctly? That'd be cool. I'd be that, yeah. I, I enjoy that. That's a fun thought. Yeah. We need more James Bonds, you know. Yeah. Korean James Bonds. One. Comcast is trying to censor our pro net neutrality website that calls for an investigation into fake FCC comments, comments potentially funded by the cable lobby. This was submitted by Evan Firefire Time Fire to our technology. So there was no way for me to shorten this down, and there's not really a way for me to truncate the information that I'm about to divulge. So. We have talked in the past. But you can truncate it. Oh, dude! I'm not even gonna hit the button on that one. Just go, go sit in the you corner. Gotta, you gotta move your hands around like this often. No, mm -mm, no. And you gotta dance around the same sentence over and over and over again. Uh uh. And you gotta say "believe me" a lot. And and huge. Yeah. And I'm amazing. Yeah. Huge. So we spoke previously about the fight for net neutrality against the FCC, whose new chairman wants to completely gut net neutrality. And so they open, you know, FCC has a public comment area that's been flooded with just literally millions of comments saying about protect net neutrality. He's saying that the people don't know what they're talking about, that they don't understand, because these are all of the rules that were put in place were put in place based on hypotheticals and not actual evidence, which in some way is true, but also is to, to protect people from what could be. And okay. so. There's been a large number of people. John Oliver is probably the one we spoke about several times with the website Go FCC Yourself. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, one more time. Go FCC Yourself. Dot com. And one more, one, one more time. Go FCC Yourself. Um, there is also a group that has been dedicated to fighting for net neutrality. That group is called Fight for the Future. They had a website called Comcast ComcastroTurf. Yeah. Comcastro turf? Yeah, 
Comcast, AstroTurf, Comcastro Turf. Yeah, I, I get it. Yep. I get it. Um, it was a pro net neutrality site that was encouraging internet users to investigate an astroturfing campaign, possibly funded by the cable lobby, because people were finding that there was a large number of comments on that FCC forum that were some. Because when you go to submit a comment onto that particular topic for the FCC's public comment area, you have to give your name and address and some other identifying information in order to actually leave the comment because you are representing yourself on as a member of the public and they were finding a very large number of comments that were very similar worded very similarly i hate to reuse the same word within you know two sentences of one another and when they contacted a lot of the people that had submitted those comments those people didn't weren't aware of what the comment was and never and claimed that they didn't submit it so this means that someone was submitting faulty information for someone else which is fraud and that's not something you should do. Um, and it looked like a lot of it was being conducted by anti-net neutrality groups based on the wording and the ways that links were established. So in order to try and make people aware of this and fight this, fight for the future, establish the website come CastroTurf. Because it, what they're doing is called AstroTurfing. Right. I didn't know that that was the actual term for that. It's pretty cool. I didn't either until I read this. But Comcast has now issued a cease and desist order to fight for the future of, over the Comcastro Turf domain name, claiming that ComcastroTurf.com violates valuable intellectual property and threatens legal action if the domain is not transferred to Comcast control. That's stupid. Right. That is completely right. So, the the thing on that is is one that is incorrect. That the, the, they have no legal basis to actually try to take that. The other part on this is though is this is a perfect example of why net neutrality is important. Because if the FCC's current proposal is enacted, there would be nothing that prevents Comcast from simply censoring the site through their own service. So one of the things we talked about of why net neutrality is important is that the, it allows them to restrict access to particular areas of the internet. One of the ones that we made the biggest comparison of, while it's not a terrible detriment, is let's take say hulu and netflix netflix wants super fast speeds through comcast and makes a deal with them to get super fast speeds hulu does not so comcast won't let you watch hulu at all through their service that That's is something fucking. yeah that is something that is potentially an option under what they under the new proposal by the fcc chairman now on a more serious level on this particular case with comcastroturf.com if they wanted to, instead of needing to do the cease and desist, bothering with lawyers, trying to sue them, all of that kind of stuff over the website, they can simply just turn off access to that website. Now that's fucked up. Yeah, because that's what net neutrality does. That's what it protects us from, from them being able to do stuff like that. Now also imagine not – this is a, a political battle. Now imagine that you are a – a, a large steel industry and you don't want there to be competition and so every time a, a, a small steel mill or anything pops up you just go to this big you know the local internet company and just pay them yeah whatever 50 grand and make it where they don't allow access to that local business's website in the age of the internet that kills that business oh easily 100 percent. and that's why net neutrality is important so this is just it, it, it helps protect small businesses. You think Linda McMahon would be in on this shit to try and help protect small businesses? Yeah, this is th th that's what this fight is over. This isn't about th this, there are aspects of privacy and things like that and options, but really net neutrality is about the internet being open and fair. And that's why this is extremely important, especially when you see Comcast trying to fight so hard to get it shut down. Because if this proposal goes through, the only people it benefits are the internet companies. It only benefits people like Comcast, Time Warner, AT&T, etc. Those are the only people that receive any benefit, and it hurts the consumer immensely. Oh, immensely. Ugh. So. I... I... I hope that this gets resolved in a timely manner and in an appropriate manner for for the the public, because vast majority of people, 
are pro net neutrality. The, uh, yeah, of America. The only, like most of the people that aren't net aren't for net neutrality either don't understand it or have some level of investment in ISPs. Exactly. So, I don't know. I I hope that this comes out in a positive way. It seems like it's not going to for the first uh, while, but I feel like if we fight enough for it, we well, can definitely do something about it. There's a large amount of Congress that is fighting for it. There's a large amount of the population that is fighting for it. It's just a matter of actually getting there because mm -hmm. this is the problem with so much money being able to be funded and just put straight into politicians' hands because it does sway them. And I, I don't care who you are. If someone pays you absorbent amounts of money, it's going to affect your mindset on certain issues. Oh, easily. If if you sat there and was like, hey, it's totally okay to kill small birds out in the wild and then handed me 50 grand, I'd be like, yeah, it totally is okay. Yeah, go go for it. Small ones, yeah. And small as you want. The other th and people were like, that's one of the things that people advocated for Trump for is like, oh, he's so rich, he can't be bought. It doesn't matter. No, he still can. Like, except the difference is instead of, you know, like paying. Them he's not the richest dude. He wants to be the richest dude. Oh, he's not the richest dude by far. He's like the like he, he's like the 576th richest dude. Right. But that doesn't stop him from wanting more. Well, and the other thing is, is that when you're rich, you got to do things to stay rich. Exactly. You and, spend a lot. In order to spend a lot, you need to make a lot. Well, and instead of like, okay, we'll give $40,000 to this campaign and do $40,000 to this and $80,000 to this, instead for Trump, it's about investments and brokering correct deals that benefit him. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, he's, I mean, he can still be bought. It's just with a different type of paper. Yeah. Anywho. I I hate how our president can be bought like that. It. I mean, honestly, anyone can. Like, most people spend their entire lives fighting just to get to enjoy small aspects of life. So if someone's going to offer you something that makes your life immensely easier just for possibly changing your opinion on something, that's a difficult decision. That's a difficult situation to be in. True. Because, like, I mean, I have some very strong views, but if you offer me enough money, I will happily flip on them. I would like to think that I wouldn't. I would like to think that I would take the money and then continue my views. Sure. Thank you for your donation. It's very unfortunate that I still don't see your, your you know, view. But thanks for the money. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like I'm pretty stubborn. I got it from my dad yeah, and my mom. Yeah, a lot of those those situations come from, here's some money. If you do this, there will be more. Yeah. Not just, here's all of it. Did it work? Yeah. Uh, Andrew's I'm like... Me, oh. Look at me! I was going to say, uh, in, the, in the comments, Andrew said, thank God the Clintons weren't squeaky clean. And I was going to say, thank God I didn't vote for the Clintons. I did. But, I mean... Yeah. No, I um I voted Green Party. Good for you, sir. Anywho, Nathan, what'd you care about in the last twenty four hours? Uh the Overwatch event dropped today. The anniversary I, event? What is that? Yeah. They they released a couple skins, they released some uh new three V three maps, and it's it's the Overwatch's anniversary. Sure. Um they've got some pretty cool skins. For instance, there's a Bastion skin that makes him look like a Dune buggy. There's a Cyber Ninja skin for um Genji? for Hans. No, for oh, Hanzo. Oh, okay. Um, there's a there's some uh, there's a skin for a Soldier seventy six, and it's, it's eh. But Soldier seventy six skins tend to be not very great in general. Sure. Genji has a skin, and I am a thousand and five gold away from getting it, but I absolutely need it, and I don't even play Genji. What is it? It's called Sentai. And what is it? Dog. Is he just covered? See, Genji's Sentai skin. He looks like a Power Ranger or a VR Trooper. Wow! I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I will. I'll throw this up on the screen. Yeah. If I so, can... Genji's got a pretty sick skin and Sentai. I mean, all right. So I'm gonna go through the the list here. We have 
Lucio skin, and he's got a jazzy skin, and it makes him look like a pimp, and it's fucking sick. Uh, there's a uh, Symmetra skin called Oasis, and it looks meh. Um, I got it uh, in a loot box, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Farah has a Bed Bedouin skin. I, I don't know how to pronounce that, and she looks more um, she looks more Egyptian, like she she actually is. So you know, that's kind of cool. Uh, there's a Soldier 76 skin called Cyborg, and he looks meh. But you know, most Soldier 76 skins look meh. I just noticed he doesn't actually have real feet, so that's kind of cool. Uh, Diva skin's really cool because she turns into that girl from that poster, you know, the, the We Can Do It poster. Sure. Um, as well as her, her mech gets this really sick 50s look. Cool. Uh, the, then there's the Sentai skin, that's easily the best skin in this entire one. Uh, Hanzo's Cyber uh, Ninja skin's pretty cool, he just looks like a, you know, an, an, an android. And then there's the Dune Buggy. Zarya gets one called Cyber Rain, and she looks kind of like Iron Man. And I, it's probably her best uh, legendary skin, but that, again, it's not really saying much. Her other good one is probably like the Olympics. Sure. Um, May gets Beekeeper, and it's probably her best, but again, May doesn't have very many good ones. And then Tracer gets one called Graffiti, where she looks like she's from Jet Set Radio. Fun. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Overwatch. <laughs> Motherfucking Andrew doesn't even play, and he's calling people Hanzo mains. He set up a bitch. Isn't that just a thing? It's like yeah, what, it's what everyone does. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. Anyways, I really want that Genji skin. I have Oni Genji, and I thought I was just gonna play that, but like, that Sentai skin is everything I'm about. Yeah. It's, dude. I want to run around as Sentai Genji, and then fucking Ryuji, what uh, fucking sword thing, dash, slash, everywhere. I just want to be the hero. You know, unfortunately, I find that skin to appear rather lazy. I mean, yeah, it is. Especially if it's one of the super expensive ones. It is. It is. Like they like not they they barely change his colors and then just put the little wings on his on his helmet and was like They do a they do a little more than just that. Yeah, a little bit. No. Uh they gave him a um a scarf. Um, sure. But anyways, like I re I really like that I really like his that skin. It's really I think it's a sick skin. It just uh, makes it, me think of a uh, Super Saiyan man. Exactly. That's why, because they're all based off of Sentai shows. Yeah. Or uh, Beautiful Joe. Exactly. Another Sentai thing. Yep. Still don't think I would get it. Dude, I'm definitely getting that. That is by far the, the best one, in my opinion, in this fucking anniversary thing next to probably the Lucio skin. Or, like, the D.Va skin, or, like, the Tracer skin. Well, And I thought I was going to pick up the Soldier 76 skin, because I still don't have a Soldier 76 skin, and I and I kind of want to main him. Sure. So. Uh, keeping up with video games, <coughs> I played, for the first time in my life, the first 15 minutes of Final Fantasy Tactics last night. Okay. And it, it's a tactics game. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's true. I mean, it's War of the Lions, and I'm playing it on my phone, but it's pretty pretty. Is, is it tied into 12's universe? Yeah, they're both in uh, Ivalis, 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 I don't know. Ivalis. Is that how it's pronounced? No, that's uh, that, that's actually a, a, a lucha wrestler. Her name's Ivalis, and uh, she okay. wrestles dudes. Otherwise, though... Um, the only other things I care about in the last 24 hours is, uh, I wish people would stop being scumbags and killing each other. Um, yeah. I had a really annoying day at work today because, like, my, 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 one of my supervisors went into the, we should do it this way, and then was presented logic of why that is the wrong way to do it, and then went, it doesn't matter, I'm the supervisor, so we're going to do it this way because I said so, whether you like it or not. Oh, I hate that. That is such an infuriating thing, especially because it was like, once you're done doing that, send it off for approval. And I send it off for approval, and they went, no, it's wrong. You should have did it the way that I already said we should have. Did you tell? They the were already gone for the day. Oh. Well, but, I hope I hope they learn their lesson. It happens a lot. And it's like, I'm not just trying to like do your job for you. I just want this work to be done correctly so we don't have to redo it. Now we do. Stupid. Watch, you're gonna have to redo it again. Probably, but whatever. 
we'll just keep rolling with it. Otherwise, though, I am excited for uh, an upcoming three-day weekend. It is Memorial Day weekend coming up, which means that you and me have Monday off, which is awesome. Which news. means I have plenty of time to grind for that skin. Yeah, you do. Uh, I will, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm getting closer to finishing Tales of Berseria, so I'll probably play a bunch of that or hang out with Jennifer. Who knows? I don't know. We'll, I'll, I'll, who knows? It's a mystery. But for the time being, though, it is time to get out of here. So, Nathan, are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to bro. Cool, let's bro down, dog. Everybody, if you want to help support this show, go and leave us a five-star review on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play iTunes is the best one because about 80% of all podcasts are listened to on iTunes. It's free, and if you do it, it helps us immensely by getting us more visibility when people search for things that we might pop up in. We are, uh, at least if I, I hope so, I hope I should, I, if not, I'll have to update it. Anyway, we should be under the news and culture category because that's what we're trying to market ourselves as, is a news show, even though we are uh, uh, us. <laughs> Otherwise, though, um, if you'd like to follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, Facebook. All of those are at iReditCast. Myself, I'm at Schwan Michael. Nathan is at Bibenstein. You can support the show financially by going to patreon.com slash daily internet. If you have $1 a month, $1 a month or more, please go to patreon.com slash daily internet and support us to help the show grow so that we can go and do more things. If you do watch the show live, that cool intro at the very beginning, that was paid for by the patrons. And we would like to do more cool stuff, including more episodes. But we need the funding in order to do it. If you would like to watch the show live and you're listening to this at home, currently this week we are going live um, at 9 p.m. Alaska time, 10 p.m. Pacific Daylight time. Specific Daylight time. But next week we are going to be starting our new time and see. It's just a test run for now, but it will be 6 p.m. for Alaska time, 7 on the... Uh, west coast 10 p.m on the east coast oh shit no way what's up i was uh scrolling through reddit and i found out that uh just uh, i just found out lisa spoon hour who is caitlin from clerks has died oh i'm sure we'll talk about it tomorrow mm -hmm. well, yeah. i'm talking about it right now spoilers well um, most people have probably turned off the show at this point Fair. anyway everybody that is your 290 second dose of the internet i am michael schwann and I'm Nathan Wood. And please remember, everyone. Don't get Have a good day, everyone.